The subject of this six to fix in six relates to the habits of highly effective QPs, qualified persons, people releasing the batches. Now I'm a QP, well I was, uh, 20 odd years ago, I was responsible for releasing products. And I have to say, even then I thought the job was tough, whereas today it's considerably tougher. You know, NSF, we've been educating QPs for over 22, 23 years. So we're very strongly connected to the QP world. And it is clear to us that the level of pressure that QPs are under today is immense, which is why we put great emphasis on our training on these types of practices. If you look upon the QP, often the bottleneck, the QP is often, you know, the, it is the last step before batch release. Um, so a lot of activity has gone on beforehand and then it comes down to the QP, many of you watching this, to actually release the product. Now, when I was in the job, the pressure was considerable. That pressure now is even greater because as you all know, we have supply chain issues, we have lots of work in progress, we're, we're, we're running our plant and equipment to 100% utilisation. We can list on and on and on the types of pressures, the additional pressures that many of you are under. So the objective of this session is to share with you the habits that our QPs, our very experienced QPs, part of our alumni have told us are the essentials. So here are the six to fix in six of highly effective QPs. Now there's an assumption I've made here. Number one, is that you have really good knowledge and understanding of your products and processes and the basics of GMP. Because frankly, if you don't, you should not be a qualified person. So that's an assumption that I've made, excellent knowledge of your products and processes. Number one, um, get mobile. What I mean by that is, yes, QPs are there to release products. Uh, they go into the product release office to do that. But you've got to get out, you've got to get onto the site, you've got to liaise with, client, with your colleagues, you've got to network uh, effectively. A good QP spend maybe 20% of the time releasing product, 80% of the time out of the product release office, helping, guiding, coaching, uh, mentoring, uh, assessing the health of the quality management system, all of those important activities outside their uh, release duty. So, get mobile. Number two is work really, really hard to establish a, an excellent network to understand your business. Uh, uh, network with your subject matter experts so that you know who to go to when you need more information. Also a network provides you with resources for additional advice, people to bounce ideas off. It's really important that that internal and external network is healthy so that you start to understand the pressures that many of your colleagues in the supply chain and in manufacturing in particular are under. That network is your lifeboat. If you have a really, really strong network, people to go to for help and support, guidance and advice, it will make your job a lot easier. Number three, really, really excel at risk-based decision-making. You know, on our QP course, uh, on each module, we focus all of the time on taking our delegates through a structured approach to risk-based decision-making. You've got to be really, really good at that because there's a lot of risk flying around. So your ability to manage that um, well is really, really key. Number four, be part of the solution, not just the problem. So often um, QPs are criticised because they just criticise. You know, they say they're not going to release the batch, uh, they're not going to do what manufacturing want them to do. And what is really key is that to be respected, you need to be part of the solution, not the problem. You know, being an effective QP is all about relationships. And if you have a healthy relationship with your manufacturing and supply chain colleagues, the business benefits, the patients benefit. But if there's war, if there's conflict, as a result of differences of opinion that are not solved, you're in for a pretty tough time and the business and ultimately the patients will suffer. So always think about being part of the solution rather than the problem. Number five, um, really, really invest in lifelong learning. Um, you know, there's a lot happening in terms of science and technology. There's a, an awful lot changing. There's a lot more you can know about the core skills of being an essential QP 
which is largely to do with interpersonal communication and behavioural skills rather than the manufacturing process. But you've got to work at it. So invest in lifelong learning. And that means putting time aside for that. Um, number six, um, you know, most of you would be familiar with this. Does the decision pass the family test? Would I allow a member of my family to take that particular product? Now, that's a, that's, that's a, a very good acid test. But make sure that you base it on the facts. Um, you know, we've covered before that in any decision there are facts, there are, there are assumptions, and there are areas you don't know. So the job of the QP is to make sure decisions are fact-based. So when you come to the family test, would I allow this product to be used by a member of my family, base it on facts rather than emotion. And a, and a, and a free one, your seventh of the six to fix, is really investing in your resiliency. That is your ability to take the hits and to bounce back stronger. And if you need any advice on that, please contact me because we've been in the business of uh, educating QPs and in quality management for 30 odd years. Uh, so we know an awful lot about what it takes to be resilient. So anyway, there's your sixth and your free seventh. Um, please put these up on the wall in your office. Practice, practice. If you need any help, give us a call.